The purpose of the screencast is to set the context for our next class text, America is in the Heart by Carlos Bulusan. Carlos Bulusan was a Filipino immigrant who came to the United States in 1930 at the age of 17. I should note that 1930 was right at the start of the Great Depression. And the reason he was able to come over is because uh, at the time, the Philippines had been colonized by the United States, which meant if you had the money, you could come over and take a stab at life here. You should also note that the Philippines is located in Asia, um, and that should give you some context about the di distance he had to travel to get to the United States. When he came here, he had three years of education and very little knowledge of the English language. Um, and while he first landed in Seattle, he did end up in L.A., and we'll read about his travels in part two of the text. In 1936, he suffered a serious accident that left him in the hospital for two years, and it is there that he began to write. So at this point, he was about 23 years old, and he actually experienced a lot of success as a writer and even got his stories published in The New Yorker. This specific text was published in the 1940s, and it tackles the paradox of coming to America. Remember, a paradox is a sim uh, seemingly contradictory uh, statement. Um, so in the intro of the book, you find this quotation. It is described as a deeply moving account of what it is like to be treated as a criminal in a strange and alien society, one to which the immigrant has been drawn precisely because of the attraction of its ideals. Um, I bolded a few words here because, again, it communicates the paradox of what it means to come to the United States. So while the United States sent this message about its ideals and this being a country where people could come and succeed, the reality did not always align to that ideal and was not as simple. And in fact, as captured here, uh, Borusan himself experienced being treated as a criminal in this land. Um, you sh I should also note that while the text is sold as a memoir, it really does capture more of a collective experience of Filipino immigrants. Um, but I want to point out that uh, he doesn't completely turn against um, his new country because of the experiences that he has here being treated as a criminal. In fact, it's important to pay attention to how he communicates the complexity of America. Specifically, we now need to talk about the context for this cycle's reading. You need to know that Bulusan grew up as the fourth son in a poor peasant family. And here's a picture of fields in the Philippines um, that show uh, the typical working um, setting for a boy like Bulusan. Um, he worked as a farmer with his family, uh, with his father, while his mother lived in a separate village with two younger siblings. Um, and they, while they lived in different parts, they were not separated. The parents did remain married. Um, the first uh, part of the text does focus a lot on two of Bulusan's brother. One we meet in part one. Um, and this is an older brother who is off fighting in a war. And it could be presumed that he is off fighting in World War I because of the time frame and also because, again, the U.S. had colonized the Philippines and so some Filipinos actually ended up serving as soldiers in Europe. And a second brother is off studying. The family dream, in fact, was to send one of the sons through school. School, because of American colonization, had become free um, to Filipinos. However... Because of how few schools there were, most families were only able to send one of their children to study. And in sending them off to study, they had to pay for their room, their board, clothing, things like that. And this is why they could only afford to send one. And everything that you see in part one, all the hard work the family is focused on accomplishing, is with the goal of having this son graduate from high school and become a teacher. A few things to keep in mind as you read. Um, the first part of the book describes Bulusan's life growing up poor in the Philippines, like I said before. And the stories that he tells um, are very purposeful. Okay, And these stories, we're going to call them anecdotes. And you should be referencing anecdotes in our final, or sorry, in our uh, weekly um, writing that you will do on Monday. Um, so these anecdotes do a few things. One, they tell... Um, purposefully why America is such a desired place, but specifically for our purposes, you need to pay attention to them to understand what is he saying about his perception of his family and what is he saying about the perception of his country. And as you're reading part one, you need to follow the trajectory of Bolusan's social awakening. So 
look to see how he becomes conscious of social classes in his country. And through those stories, through those anecdotes, pay attention to the tone that he's going to be using because he's going to be sending a message about what life in the Philippines is like. Um, you need to keep in mind that our first thought paper will be answering this focus question. Uh, what does Bulusan's experience in the Philippines re reveal about his life in his native country? And again, you're going to have to reference techniques that he uses. Two specific ones that I want you to pay close attention to are tone and anecdotes.